Well, hi and welcome to Glitch 2600. Who am I? I am Brian, aka Glitch, your friendly host through all things geekery and lighting, photography, videography, computers, all that fun stuff. That's what I'm here for. And you're here for a Glitch Bite, which is this is technically an unboxing slash review, which we've been doing a chunk of those lately. But normally a Glitch Bite is a tips and tricks that you can consume in around 15 to, to 20-ish minutes. Our last one went a little long because it also was an unboxing. We've got a bunch of stuff that we're, we're getting from Nanlite that uh, we're checking out and, and testing. And we also picked up a new Mac Studio um, at the same time. <clears throat> You know, we're doing a, a video on transferring data from your Intel Mac to your M1 because there are some tricks on that. So keep an eye for that. We have that in the can ready to go. So you'll get that. And we'll get back to our normal, you know, Q&A geek outs um, in the not too distant future. But <clears throat> having said that, let's start talking about the whole thing. Reason why we're here, which is the Nanlite Fabric Barn Door grid for the Pavo tube to this says 15x I'm going to use this on the 15c but uh, they're pretty close um, in size 15c is just a little bit bigger <clears throat> and the X series has a spigot on the bottom which makes some mounting a little bit easier but in general you get the idea having shown that let's go ahead and cut over and take a look at this so here's the box there's not a whole lot to this unboxing, you know, a whole lot that we need to show here. It's a box. It has the model on it. The BD for barn door for the Pavo 2 15X, you know, plus EC for egg crate. And that's where we're going to be talking about, you know, light modifiers and different things we can do for that to control our light a little bit better. And that's what this tool is all about. We're also going to talk about a low cost alternative that's maybe not quite as fancy, but will definitely work. So here's what the box looks like. Open it up, and it has a black bag inside of it. And that's it, that's the end, we're, we're done with the, the whole show. I'm just kidding, I think. <laughs> so I actually did already open this up, so all this stuff was wrapped in nice plastic, crinkly, loud plastic but I didn't think you guys wanted to see that. So first we have the little mount brackets that put the, you put the light in the center here and then the barn doors attached to the side right there. <clears throat> and then we have the outside fabric for the barn doors. Of course, labeled with Nan light on them. And you can see it kind of opens here with an access panel and we'll go over that in a second the instructions, and then the egg crate itself, which we don't have to use at first. In fact, we're not even gonna show it at first. I'm just gonna show you guys. It opens up and it's basically just little slats. And we'll talk about why. So let's go ahead and open up this little puppy here. Oh, there we go. It's a little bright, we will have to fix that camera later. But there's the instructions comes out and it kind of just spells out how to build the thing. So let's if I put it right side up for you guys. There we go. <clears throat> it talks about all the usage and, and ways to do it. It is still upside down. One side's one way, one side's the other. There you go. So it shows how you can do that. And if you had the 15 tube, you can uh, do stuff a little bit different. You can get the the larger one for the, the 30X, the double X size there. And then it talks about how to install the rest. So pretty straightforward, that's it for the instructions. <clears throat> so let's just do it. Let's build the thing so we can talk about it. So I'm gonna zoom back a little bit. You guys are gonna see a little bit of extra junk on my, my work table right now. Hopefully you're okay with that. And to build this, basically we line these up. It makes sense, it's gotta to go towards the inside. This is where the tube itself sits. So we set that there, lay them out flat, and then we gotta get these on there. So you'll notice, oh, if I pull off that Velcro there, 
both sides. That on this side we have some Velcro. That's to attach the egg crate on later. <clears throat> then we open up, there's Velcro on the inside here. That's also for attaching the egg crate. So right now, this is what we want to do. We want to open this up, get all of this piece lined all the way out there, and set this on top. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So once it's on there, all we have to do is take this flap and fold it over so that the bottom of this little Velcro sits and touches this. So at the end of this one, same thing. We pull it all the way over and taunt. So now it's on there and isn't going anywhere. So on this side, just to show you again, we take it and fold it over the top like so. And there you go. Pull this side a little taunt. That closed. Fold that over and there you go. Now you'll see this is all one unit now. This side can sit up and sit up. This is what gives us the barn door effect. So that's all great and fine and dandy, but let's take a quick look at what we're trying to do. So if I cut back here, we'll grab a handy dandy Pavo tube. And if we kick on this Pavo tube and shine on the back, you'll notice it goes all over the back. I mean, this has pretty good control because it's only so big here and we're using color so that it illustrates just a little bit better where all it's going. But if you notice, if I turn this way, it just splashes all on this counter, all up around there. If I were to shine it on me, it goes everywhere. You know, even if I bring it above my head, it just kind of goes and spills on everything. <clears throat> well, what we want to do is control that. So by doing this and just this piece before we even get to the other parts, let's open this up. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and pop that on this side. I believe, nope, actually I want to pop that on this side, right there. I'm going to slide this down. So remember how I was saying the 15C, which is the older version, does not do the pixel um, effects. So it does colors, but pixel effects allow you to do rainbows down through. That's what the 15X can do. The 15X is also slightly shorter at that point. <clears throat> so that it just fits inside here. This one goes a little bit outside of it. So because of that, we'll have a little bit over the top and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in a bit. But if I take this over, I close this over the top, close this side over the top, make sure this is taunt, because I want this all the way down at the end. I do that because I want my control knobs up here and you'll see why here in just a second. Once I get that on there, this just locks down. So you take this and it locks into place. So once that's on there, that's taunt. I'm going to pull this other side so it's taunt too. Do the same thing, pull this over so it grabs it. Now it's taunt, now it's held. And what's nice here is these are now fully movable. So as we cut this back now, we still have them on there. Right now it looks much like a little sailing device. But if I turn this on, you'll still see it goes everywhere because this isn't really stopping a whole lot. But if I start to close this down, you'll notice on the background, it's already starting to fall off right there. If I close this down a little bit more, so close this side down, where we have this little slit now. <clears throat> See, we can really control where that light is going. So with that, just that little bit, even though we have this part spilling over the top, if I hold that and over the top, you'll notice now it's not quite going everywhere unless I tell it to, it's not going to hit that background. If I open this back up again and flare this back out, you'll notice it hits that background there a lot more. If I flare this one forward so it's back in that wing mode, you'll notice it still just kind of goes everywhere. It's splashing all on the background. And that's the difference that a barn door can make. Barn door gives us that capability <clears throat> that as we move it now, we control how much it hits. 
like I said, if I might want a little bit more over there, maybe I want some to spill on me as it's to the side, but I don't want it to get on my camera. I don't want to cause lens flare. That's where those barn doors can come in handy. So then you're going to ask, <clears throat> that's great, then what's the egg crate for? Well, light likes to scatter. So it's both a wave and a particle. We can get into all the fun science of it, but basically it likes to scatter. The more it scatters, the more pretty and soft the light becomes. But when we want to control where it hits, when we want to have that fine tune, we don't want it to necessarily go everywhere. Well, let's say it's Black Friday and you come in the, the doors of your favorite shopping mart, let's, the, the one that looks like a, the red circles, they open it up, it's, it's Black Friday, everyone goes running in, what do they do? They go in all directions. What happens then instead on the freeway? We have lanes, we stick to that. We can't jump over that very easily. So if you had that happening at Target, let's say instead of going wide, now you have to stick down these lanes. That's what an egg crate does. That's what a grid does. It takes all those and the more ten, you know, densely packed that grid is, the more that degree of spread becomes less because everything has to now go straight. They're saying, Walk in lockstep. You're, you're now marching forward. You don't get to just go off and be on your own and go do something crazy. You don't get to go shine over on that wall. No, you got to go straight. That's what an egg crate does. So let's show and put that in so you can see what that looks like and a little bit more of that control on the wall. So if we cut back over here and kind of show this. Again, this is how we articulate those. <clears throat> the egg crate is relatively easy to put on if you don't get it velcroed to the side. Because from the top, you can kind of see one side doesn't go all the way through. That's so that the tube can sit in this pocket. So if you go to put it on the wrong way, it won't fit. If you turn it over, which is what I would recommend doing, you'll also notice that these Velcro strips, remember how I mentioned there's Velcro over here, here's the other side, those will line up. So if we do that right, we can pull this up, and kind of line those up. And this is the, the fun part here. We take this side. Remember how there's Velcro on the back right here? Well, we're gonna take that Velcro. So if I move my mic so you guys can hear me okay. We're gonna take that Velcro and fold it over. Just like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side when we wanna line that up. We'll go, okay, let's line up this first set of Velcro tabs. And we'll take this and fold it over onto there. Maybe realign that. We're not going for super pretty looks right now because we're. this is just a quick demo. Maybe we'll go a little bit for prettier looks. But then we'll line that up and we'll do that for the rest of these. So we'll, we'll get this piece lined up right there. We'll line up this one, trying to make it a little taunt. You can see it kind of starting to get a structure Bring that one up, line that up. We'll bring this piece up here, same thing, pull it taunt. And maybe not my best work for it quickly, but uh, you're getting the idea. We take this, same thing as the other side. We take it and with this Velcro, pick it up and wrap it over. So it makes a solid piece there. Same thing on this side. And then it's locked in. Now you notice we have that grid, that directionality that this light can go. <clears throat> nice thing is on the back, if you had a different one, you could put these little tubes. So for me, <clears throat> I have one of these from when we when I first got it. I put this screwed into the back. You'll notice there's two spigots. Sorry for the brightness there. But there's two spigots there. I put this in there so I can hold it, but I could slide it through here to lock it on if I wanted to. If it was the Pavo X series, instead of the manual controls being up here, like it is on the C with a little LED readout right there, the X series, this would be the panel where you could access that because that's actually built into the handle. So the light actually goes past it. That's a little difference between those two, <clears throat> but you get the idea. This at least lets me see some of my notes on there. 
but it is nice that I can get into the you know the light and kind of move it around right there. <clears throat> so sorry, allergies today. I was out my kids' uh, track race today, and it's now uh, I managed to get just enough outside to activate my allergies. So now that we have this controlled like that, if I turn this on, you'll notice it's highly directional. You know, I'm pretty far from the wall. If I was a little closer, it would be a little bit more. You can kind of see that band of light. So again, if I didn't want to flare it onto the camera, especially if I cover up that part, you'll notice I can control quite a bit. I could get just my hair, just my shoulders. I don't have to make it look like I'm balding right there. Anything like that. I could control it all the way through. So if I had this off to the side, Behind me, I get a nice little edge light from that on there. It gives me a little bit more uh, contrast because of that. So again, as an example, if I were to grab this bad boy without it and just shine it, see it's going everywhere. Where the blue, not so much. So if I turn back off the green, see how it's really light and controlled. <clears throat> Probably would have been better if I made them the same color, but this one was already green. You can see in the, I, I just like having my lightsaber and uh, going to war with this thing. One of my favorite parts of it, <clears throat> we do have the 30X that we're going to be doing a review on, and that's a nice four foot long uh, lightsaber with the pixel effects. So we'll be covering that here soon. But you're saying, you know, this one's only 7490 to get this piece. There are some things I wish they did. Instead of needing that other clamp, it would be nice if they put a spigot and just maybe made this a little bit longer so you could spick it off of this um, to go straight onto your light stand. So right now, if I were to put this on, I'd, I'd put this into my light stand right there from the side and just hang it. That's how I had it over on my other stands. So I do wish they did that. And uh, from a size point of view, you know, a couple ways to make this a little bit more adaptable. <clears throat> but... For the price, it's pretty good. But what if you don't want to spend $74.90 or if you just instead want to put all that money into, instead again, the 30C, getting the 30X or the 15X or the 15C, then what are you going to do? You still want that light control. You still want that barn door-like effect, but you don't want to spend $74. That's where we bring in Cinefoil. And what Cinefoil? Well, you should always have something like this in your pack if you're doing any type of uh, director of photography, lighting uh, technique. You should probably know what this is. Same, you know, in the same vein as gaff tape. These two things should be in your, your arsenal. And gaff tape is just uh, duct tape that's a little bit easier to tear and a little bit leaves no residue. But cinefoil is relatively cheap. You can get it for about 30 bucks. Uh, 25 to 30. Comes in as a big roll. You can get different sizes, but all it is is black aluminum foil. Yes, you could go get aluminum foil, spray paint it black, but then you'll get it, it'll flake off. It'll do a few things like that that I don't like. And for the, the cost, <clears throat> I'll spend just a little bit more. So once you get it with Cinefoil, you can just pull it out and cut it, but it's malleable. So because of that, you can kind of hear it, but I can bend it into shapes. That means I can turn it into a snoot. I can turn it into barn doors. So if I take that now and wrap that on my light, if I were to wrap it around, now it would be easier to go the long way. But for, for benefit purposes, you can kind of see how I could wrap it and have it hanging off in a way that makes a barn door. And just tape it on the backside. You know, put it there and then control it. I can cut shapes into this thing. I can do all sorts of stuff to make it a gobo, uh, so a, a go-between object, or you know, all sorts of different things. But with this, it's very versatile. It doesn't get warm because it's pretty heat resistant. Um, gives you a lot of capability for control. Like I said, you can make shapes. You know, you can use it for more than barn doors. But let's say you wanted one corner down, you just if you fold it. You just it's aluminum foil. You just move it. And it keeps that shape and stays there. Um, very useful. Heck, I can use it even with this setup. So that little gap I was talking about here, where I plan to put 
the clamp over this, the clamp lets light through. If I want to, I could just take some cinefoil and wrap this up. Or I could just put some cinefoil over this piece and direct it forward. It would be just like having a barn door on this little mini piece. I could engineer my own little mini barn door. Put a little bit of aluminum, the black aluminum foil on this side and that side. A little bit of tape or Velcro. And there you go. And I'm all set. <clears throat> Very nice and useful. So that's what you can kind of do with that light control. So a soft box is very similar um, in this setup, but it's, uh, other than it has extra diffusion on the front. This doesn't have diffusion um, in its setup. That's the difference of a barn door itself. This light I have up here actually has barn doors on it. So does this one. And this one over here has an egg crate on it. But even this one with barn doors, I sat there and put diffusion silk over the front, which kind of turned it into a mini soft box, um, just because I didn't have a rectangular light uh, softbox that would or that would match up to a rectangular light um, for its source. So when in doubt you can always engineer something. It doesn't have to spend the money. It is nice in a case like this the Nanlite one will fold up really nice and small, go into this bag and then sit there ready to be you know for quick gear. That's where you spend that little bit extra money. But when you're starting out <clears throat> start with some cinefoil, gaff tape, spend the money into your light instead and get that pixel effects and maybe something else you like. I'm not knocking the 15C, I bought two of them, but I will say having uh, tried out a little bit of the 30X, it's a pretty neat light. Now I will tell you they do have the T7 coming out that's $95. doesn't let you do quite as much, but for $95 gives you pixel effects just like the 30X. It's three feet long, so if you want to have a nice big lightsaber, it also works well. So We'll be reviewing that whenever they come in stock and get to me because I've pre-ordered them along with the Pavo bulb. But having said that, I want to remind you guys, if I haven't already, which I don't think I have, that if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. That means, you know, hit the little bell so that you get notified when we go live or when we're planning, especially for our, our geek out sessions where if you have a question, you could submit it, type it up. Um, live and we'll answer it live. You know, you can type it ahead of time too and we'll still answer it live. You just won't be live on that part. Hopefully you'll be alive. You just won't be live on there. And, you know, <laughs> I, I digress. I'm getting off on, on that topic. But you can be notified when we do these types of things. And you can still, on any of them, submit questions on any of our videos. We'll see them and we'll be happy to try to answer them and work them in and, and let you know. Um, having said that, you can always support us on Buy Me A Coffee. We are working on some stuff there that if you have questions and need one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's eCam training, maybe you need help getting through that setup and configure. That's what we use to go live. Um, maybe you want to know about photography and videography or need help with computer setups or just bouncing ideas off. We'll be having some stuff there. But otherwise, if you want to support the channel, none of the stuff that I show you guys is provided for provided to me by Nanlite or by any other company. I just go out and buy them. And because I like them, I review them. So PodMic, Fethead for my Gain Booster. I have a Cloud Lifter for the Gain Booster that we'll be reviewing some stuff there soon. You know, those types of things, the, the Roadcaster, the gear that we have um, isn't uh, provided by, by those sources. It's provided by me liking toys and, and geeking out on there. So if you want me to review more and like that, by all means, feel free to support. But at the same time, you can just ask your questions and that makes me happy to just be able to answer them for you. So you don't have to if you don't want. But having said that, I'm going to go and start unboxing some other stuff to get ready for another future video. And we're going to start recording that instead of a, a live for some of these, just so we can get some more stuff posted up. So you'll, like I said, you'll be seeing all sorts of unboxing that transfer, you know, for an Intel to an M1 Mac, because there is a trick to cut down days, hours of transfer. There's a trick for that, so I'll be showing you guys how to do that. And then uh, we'll be reviewing some more hardware and getting these geek outs started up again. So I hope you had a good time. I had a great time, but I'm going to get back to playing. So I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.